Contender Regime Boxing, checking back in with y'all, man. What's good? So, continuing to break down the Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford fight, I want to talk about which version of Earl Spence that needs to show up in order to defeat Terrence Crawford. And then we'll also talk about which version of Terrence Crawford that needs to show up in order to defeat Earl Spence. And so that'll it'll be separate videos. In this video, I want to focus more on the version of Earl Spence that needs to show up to defeat Terrence Crawford. Um, I think it's quite interesting when you look at Earl Spence specifically because we've seen multiple styles from Earl Spence. We've seen him fight different style of fights over the course of the last maybe four or five opponents if you look at the mikey garcia fight nobody had i mean if you if you haven't been watching earl spence closely throughout his career you probably didn't know that he can box like that if you didn't watch him in the amateurs or in the olympic games or if you didn't watch his very first pro fight where i put up a video on this channel um, where it showed Earl Spence using fighting at all three levels in a matter of 60 seconds in his very first pro fight. Um, also, the Ronald Cruz fight, I think that was like his ninth or tenth fight, box Ronald Cruz ears off. You dig what I'm saying? But a lot of people who had been following Earl Spence that closely in the Mikey Garcia fight, they were like surprised and, and you know, um, impressed with how well he boxed and though he did put on a, a great performance boxing from the outside using his jab uh, you know establishing and maintaining distance with Mikey you know people hadn't really seen that from Earl Spence then you, you look at the Kell Brook fight which were which was a couple of fights before that um, he stalked a moving target um, you look at the Chris Algieri fight stalked a moving target um you look at the sean porter fight an all-out high-level phone booth war you know what i'm saying a, a, a close quarters phone booth war with high level of skill from both fighters you look at the Jordanus ugas fight straight bulldozed them. you dig what i'm saying the danny garcia fight he came forward and out countered the counter puncher it was more it was him coming forward all night pretty much but it was more tactical and more precise and more calculated so that's what makes this topic interesting because earl spence has shown us so much versatility over the course of his career it's funny that people say that he's basic and only fight one way when if you really pay attention the man done fought so many different ways over the just the last five fights but let's talk about the version of Earl Spence that needs to show up to defeat Terrence Crawford. Now, Terrence Crawford being such an incredible fighter, a, phenomen a phenomenally gifted fighter, a, a guy with power in both hands who can switch orthodox and southpaw, very cerebral, very intelligent, um, you know, has pretty much everything you could ask for in a fighter to be able to compete at the elite level. That's what Terrence Crawford brings to the table. So one would think that approaching a fight versus a guy like that, you want to bring your best shit. And you want to be whatever it, it, whatever it is that you possess in your toolbox, you want to be able to put that shit together. You know what I'm saying? You want to be able to go in your closet and pull out your hardest fit. You know what I'm saying? Because you're trying to kill him. You dig what I'm saying? And that's the type of approach that I believe, you know, most guys go into a fight versus a Terrence Crawford with. With Earl Spence naming, you know, all of those previous matchups, I think Earl Spence is going to need a combination of three of those prior versions of himself taking that into the Terrence Crawford fight. I think he's going to have to have a combination of the performance versus Danny Garcia. 
I think he's going to have to have a combination of the performance versus Lamont Peterson. And I think he's going to have to have a, a combination of the performance um, with your Dennis Ugas. All three of those combined mixed together. Let me tell you why. With the Lamont Peterson fight, he fought that fight. That fight was was pretty much a mid-range back and forth. You know, of course, Earl Spence got the better of Lamont Peterson in almost every exchange. But that fight just stylistically take away like the skills and who was better and who landed the better shots and all that. Just stylistically, that version of Earl Spence, that style that he that they fought in that fight, mid range, uh, you know, countering each other, taking turns leading. Of course, Earl Spence led like he does in every fight more than Lamont Peterson in that fight. Um, he was more of the aggressor when it came time to be aggressive. But for the most part, that fight was mid-range. You know, who can get their shot off um, quicker? Who could land the more accurate shots? Um, who had the better defense? So you will see Earl Spence be first. He'll get his shit off. And then when Lamont Peterson tried to counter Earl Spence, you know, he played good defense in mid-range, was able to block a lot of those shots, and then get right back on offense when it was his time to, to count either counter or be first. Earl Spence just got the better of the exchanges. But in that fight, though, you saw Earl Spence showcase his mid-range boxing ability, his ability to establish distance, maintain it, but not just box off the back foot behind a jab like he did with Mikey. He did use the jab a lot in that fight, as he does in almost every fight. But he was it was more of a balanced attack. It was uh, 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 balanced on offense and balanced on defense. It was just similar to how Shakur Stevenson fight. It was a perfect balance of offense and defense. Not too more, not too much here, not too much there. You know what I'm saying? And he was able to overwhelm Lamont Peterson because within that balance, when it was time for him to be first, he made his offense count. And when it was time for him to play defense, he was very sharp on defense. Lamont Peterson did land a couple of shots here or there where Earl Spence took him and smiled, you know, showing that savagery, that dog that we all know that he and Terrence Crawford possess. Um, and that's what got him over the hump and, and you know, made him. That's what prevailed um, in that fight. That style, he was able to showcase his mid-range fighting ability and really just put on a display of um, great jabs, you know, uh, great overhand lefts, going to the body, a balanced offensive attack, just great defense. It was a great mid-range stylistic performance from Earl Spence in that fight with Lamont Peterson. I think he's going to have to bring in some of that because even though I would give Terrence Crawford the edge if the fight was to take place at mid-range all night, I would give Terrence Crawford the edge in that fight because in in that in those instances where the fight is being held at mid-range because Terrence Crawford is a, a phenomenal counter puncher um he's great with punching while you punch he can catch you in an exchange um he has a longer arms and just mid-range without getting too muddy I like Terrence Crawford in those exchanges but the reason Earl Spence is gonna have to bring that that aspect of his game is because at some point Terrence Crawford will have opportunities at mid-range, particularly earlier in the fight, um, you know, in those first, I would say, three to four rounds, maybe the mid-rounds too. Terrence Crawford will have opportunities in mid-range, and I think Earl Spence is going to have to bring that sharpness that he had versus Lamont in the mid-range into the fight in those moments with Terrence Crawford. The Danny Garcia performance. In that fight, Earl Spence fighting a great counterpuncher like Danny Garcia, he was able to come forward all night behind the jab, but very calculated and sharp on defense. This fight was one of the sharpest I've ever seen Earl Spence on defense. I mean, he was coming forward, coming forward, dodging, rolling with the counter shots that Danny Garcia was throwing off of Earl Spence's jab. And then he was even countering Danny Garcia's counters and then on top of that, when he wanted to be first behind the jab, he was able to do that. I think defensively, um, 
Earl Spence is going to need that ability versus Terrence Crawford as he works his way on the inside behind the jab. And of course, Terrence Crawford being a great counter puncher, he's going to have to find those opportunities to block a shot from Crawford as he's coming forward or make him, you know, make a miss slip and then also counter Terrence Crawford's counters and then, of course, continue to be first as well. So I think you're going to that you're going to see a, a big portion of that in the fight for Earl Spence, um, what you saw with him versus Danny Garcia coming forward behind the jab, countering the counter puncher. I think that's going to be key. Also, the Jordanis Ugas fight. I think this is going to be what you see in the later rounds in that fight. If the fight does go beyond seven, eight, you know, if it gets to the seventh round period and it starts to go beyond that, that's where you're going to see the Earl Spence that fought your Dennis Ugas, the workhorse, the the fighter that can throw an unlimited amount of punches. You know what I'm saying? The relentless uh, come forward ability, cutting off the ring, applying physical, mental pressure, you know, going to the body, going to the head, you know, leaning on Terrence Crawford really just making it so difficult for him to breathe, making him fight when he don't want to fight. You know what I'm saying? Making him stay still when he don't want to be still. And when he want to move, his body just can't fucking move. You know what I'm saying? That's the type of, I think you're going to see that Earl Spence on the back end of the fight from round seven on up if the fight lasts that long. I think that's the type of Earl Spence you're going to see. In my opinion, if we had to put a percentage on this, I would say, I would have to say 60% is going to be the Yordinus Ugas Earl Spence. 60% is going to be, that's the Earl Spence. You're going to see 60% of that. And then I'll say 20% of the Earl that fought Danny, or let's say 30% of the Earl that fought Danny, and then 10% of the Earl that fought Lamont Peterson. Because if I'm Earl Spence, I'm limiting the amount of opportunities that Terrence Crawford gets to just have have me in the middle of the ring at mid-range going tit for tat on some chess match shit in the middle of the range at mid-range. I'm limiting that shit as much as possible. I don't want him to be able to keep me at the end of his punches and just try to counter me in the mil at mid-range all motherfucking night because I like Terrence Crawford in those exchanges. If I'm Earl Spence, it's going to be pockets in time where you got to where you got to fight Terrence Crawford in that distance and I think Terrence Crawford will have an advantage at that range, but I like Earl Spence to win a good amount of those exchanges with the sharpness that he carried in that Lamont Peterson fight fighting that mid-range. You dig what I'm saying? So I'm going to say 60% is going to be the Earl Spence that fought Ugas. 30% is going to be the Earl Spence that fought Danny because he's going to be coming forward, you know, being sharp with good defense, head moving, head movement slipping, rolling with those punches, countering the counter puncher and just applying pressure, but tactical pressure. That's going to that's what you're going to see for the first 3 or 4 rounds. You know what I'm saying? That's what you're going to see for the first three or four rounds. And then there's going to be pockets in the fight, that 10%, where he'll have to fight Terrence Crawford at mid-range. And then on the back end of the fight, you're going to see the, the real Earl Spence, the one that where he just, where he in that in that mode for real. The 60% Earl Spence, the one that fought Jordanus Ugas. Because I'm telling y'all, he's going to be in the best shape that you ever seen him in this fight. And I think he's going to have all of the physical gifts that we that we always seen Earl Spence possess and just coupling that with the growth in experience and ring IQ and uh, you know strategy from Derrick James and just all of the things that he's been able to see over the course of the years just sharpening up on the actual skills he's now going to be able to couple that with him being a great physical specimen the guy that you saw step in the ring with your Dennis Ugas who was in phenomenal shape you know what I'm saying you look at him right now five weeks out from July 29th and I think y'all know what type of Earl Spence gonna show up physically you dig what I'm saying so ain't gonna be no getting tired in this fight ain't gonna be no like I said if, if Terrence Crawford want to beat Earl Spence you know I think he gonna have to stop him ain't gonna be no getting tired ain't gonna be no you know uh uh lessening the punch output ain't gonna be none of that either you gonna stop him 
or you're going to get ran over. That's as simple as that. You know what I'm saying? So y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comments. Stay tuned to the Terrence Crawford, which Terrence Crawford needs to show up uh, to defeat Earl Spence. I will be dropping that soon. Which version of Earl Spence needs to show up to defeat Terrence Crawford? This is what I believe um, he needs to bring into that fight to be successful. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Contender regime. Boxing, I holler at y'all boys, man.